In today's video, we're going to start working with GUI elements. Now we're going to use the GUI system first that's built into Unity. I'm not really sure what the cool marketing name is for it. I still refer to it as UGUI. But let's go ahead and start off with the text, the simplest problem. Well, maybe the I think it's the simplest one. Probably the most useful one, the one you're going to use the most, I guess. So I've got a completely empty scene here. I am in 2D mode, but it really doesn't matter what mode you're in. I'm going to come over to the hierarchy, right click, come down to the UI settings, and select text. Now it adds three things to our scene. I want to save the canvas for its own video as well as the event system. So we'll play around with the text today. But take note that if you did already have a canvas in your scene, if I went ahead and deleted that text, and I was anywhere in the scene, right clicked, went ahead and added another text. And this works for all the GUI elements. It'll automatically add it to that canvas. And if for some reason you have more than one canvas, it'll always add it to the bottom canvas. So you can go ahead and drag and drop, put it where you want. And again, this isn't a text specific one. It's just, just the way it works. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete one. And this is the one I have here. Now I do wanna cover the rec transform more in depth in its own video, but just to start off with, I wanna go ahead and move it up to the corner here. So I'm gonna set it up for maybe a score or something like that. So if we click this little box here, we get a choice of setting anchor points and also the position. And you can control which ones you're setting by pressing either shift. And we notice some of the changes here and the alt. So I'm just gonna start off by pushing shift alt and clicking this top left corner. And I'm also gonna come over to my game view so we can see it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and move it off to the side a bit. Now let's get the Y position wrong. Do I go up 10? Do I go down 10? I believe it's, yeah, it was down 10. There we go. Now, to be honest, I'm actually going to fix that spacing through the, uh, the text parameter. But I just wanted to show that you could do that. But like I said, I'll go more in depth in that as we go along. Just want to focus in on the text component today. All right, here we are here. The text is a, don't worry about the script. It's just a component. And the first parameter is what is displayed there. Might be able to see it a bit better down here if I zoom in a bit. Or not. Well, let's go ahead and change the text. What I want to do is actually just copy what's there and do multiple lines of it. Now, we're not seeing it in our application, but that's okay. Here's where you type your text message. So if that is score, and we'll look at a script on how to control this as well. And I'll type it in at the end. Now, the reason why I'm putting all these lines in here is we'll need them for extra parameters down here. Okay, so the font, the very first one, is how we change the overall appearance. I have gone ahead and downloaded a font from the Asset Store. And that's the Jazz Create Bubble. So we can go ahead, drag and drop it in. And notice how the font changed. Also click the target and select either the default, which was Arial, or any other one that you have in your scene. I'm gonna go with the, uh, the Jazz one for now, something new. Then of course we have the font size. You can click beside these and drag if you want. And it makes it bigger and smaller. Now notice once you get too big for these, these, the box, that little rec that it's in, it disappears. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it there for now. And again, we're still only seeing that first line. And you can drag it down. I'll grab a corner and move it around to adjust the sizes. And now we see a few of them because I've made it bigger. And I've done that for the line spacing. This controls how much spacing we have between each line of text. So just to emphasize, I'll go to two, which will double it. There we go. Notice how much more line or how much more space we have between each line. You want to tighten it up, maybe a 0.8, whatever it is you need. The next line is rich text. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of rich text commands. We'll start off by making this first line bold. And there's quite a few different rich text commands that you can use. So notice that first line now is bold. Doesn't show up very well. So let's do the next line. Let's make it red. And we'll enter the hex code FF0000. And of course we have to close that tag. And I forgot my slash. There we go. You can even control the alpha. 
Let's do something in the middle, 8-8. Eight, eight. Or full 100%. But again, if you wanna learn about rich text and which ones you need support, just go ahead and take a look in their docs. There's quite a few that they support. The next area is alignment. And all you have to do is just, well, basically click. You want it to be centered inside of the box. Left or right aligned. And the same thing for its vertical positioning. There we go. And when I said I was going to go ahead and adjust the position off the Y, and this is how I usually do it. I usually have for score one line showing. And instead of having it right at the top, I'll go ahead and set it for the center. Now, a line by geometry, to be honest, I've never used this. The Unity doc says, Use the extents of glyph geometry to perform horizontal alignment rather than glyph metrics. No idea. I have never actually used it. I don't think I've ever actually seen it used. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you actually know how to use this property. I'm gonna stretch this out a bit so we can see the full name of the rest. Uh, horizontal overflow. I'm gonna go ahead and take this text and I'm just gonna smash a bunch of other letters in there. And take note that when it gets to the end, it automatically line breaks and goes to the next one. That's what wrap mode does. If we switch it over to overflow, it just keeps going. So it will not go to the new line unless you put a new line character in here, basically hitting enter or return. So this can technically extend off my screen. So just be careful with it. It's just something you, you know, you have to work with inside of your project. And I'm going to go ahead and switch it back to wrap. Uh, take note that we have all these down here. The last one is the score. I'm going to scroll them back up. And for the next one, the vertical overflow. By default, it's set to truncate, which means it just chops everything off. It won't show anything if it's outside of this box. We can switch that over to overflow. And now everything will be put there. Now, since we have it set to be centered for the alignment on the vertical, notice that my top line actually goes above as well. So you might have to go ahead and play around with that if you have a lot of text. Now best fit, if we went ahead and selected it, instead of having our font size that we set manually, you can actually set a range. So you can say, I want a font anywhere between 10 and 24. And depending on the size of the area you give it, it will actually go ahead and adjust the size for you. I find this can come in handy if you're creating GUIs that you know are gonna be displayed on multiple screen resolutions. So just setting something like best fit and then coming into the canvas and making sure that the UI scale mode is switched over. But again, I don't wanna look at the canvas too much right now. Okay, so we've got best fit color. Now I've gone ahead and changed one line's color through the text component up here using rich text. You can switch all of the color, at least the default color by selecting the box. And of course we've all worked with color picture pickers before. Now take note that the colors that you use in your rich text over here will override whatever your default is down here. Now, if you have a special material for your text, you can go ahead and assign it here as well. Maybe you've got one that gives it a nice shine or something like that. We have the ability to change that. Then Raycast Target. For text, I usually leave this off. And for buttons or anything that you want to interact with, you're gonna to wanna to turn that on. What it does is it stops Raycasts from interacting with your GUI elements. If it's ticked, then your Raycast will work with the elements. If it's not ticked, Raycast will go right through it and we'll hit the stuff behind it. So there we go, we looked at all that. Let's go and take a look at a script. So I've got a script here, I'm just gonna go and drag on to change the text. And just like the other game component, you can just go and drag it on. And I'm actually gonna shrink the text down here a bit. And you can drag this onto anything. And I actually meant to drag it onto the canvas. It really does matter where I put it. Once you do have it dragged and dropped on, just make sure you drag whatever text you want to change. It's going to be looking for that component. So I have the text component on the text game object. So that's how I drag it over. And it automatically goes and grabs that text component for me. Let's go ahead and take a look at that script. All right. So I've got a very short script here because I just want to point out the important things for controlling the, the, the text. You can go in and grab any one of those properties and change them through code. But the one that you're going to be doing the most is just updating the actual text itself. 
So in order to change anything about one of the UI elements, you're going to have to include the unity.ui namespace. So make sure you add that at the top. And then for the text component, it is of type text. So I've gone ahead and just created one called, well, text component. Then generally outside of my script, I have something that comes in here and calls it and changes it. But to keep it simple, I'm just going to call it from the start. And in which case this is a update text. And I actually am going to switch this to public because in later videos, we'll, we'll be calling this. And the way this works is I'm going to go ahead, get that game object text component, which is of type text. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to go ahead and grab that component that's on the game object. It's of type text. And I'm going to access the text property and I'm going to set it equal to this string. So let's go see it in action. We'll jump back into Unity. And when I hit play, there we go. We've got our text. And of course, because we have the wrap set up, it wraps. And of course, we could also go in, if we had some sort of score being passed in, let's actually pass in a score. So we'll pass in 1 million points. As I said, this is probably the most common thing used with text. So I'll just go score dot to string. There's lots of ways to convert it to string. That's just the way I picked today. And if we start it up here, well, I've got an error. And that's because I'm passing in an integer, which is fine. That's actually what I meant to do. Thinking too far ahead. There we go. Let the errors go away and start it back up. And there we go. We have it. Now, of course, you could use string format to go ahead and put your postures and everything else. But again, outside of the scope of this video, I just wanted to show you how to go ahead and add that text component, where to put it on the screen and how to use it. Now, for the next few days, I'm probably not going to have a whole lot of access to the Internet. So we're going to be covering a few more of the GUI element things because I had these already made and they're kind of like my backup videos for days that I won't be online. And they're all going to be focused on the Unity GUI system. But I do want to come back later and go ahead and create our own using sprites. All using sprites that we've downloaded on a sprite sheet. But hopefully we get the internet sorted out here before I run out of UGUI videos. Anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.